everyone. Welcome back to our podcast, No More Secrets. As always, I'm your aunt, Mary Albrecht. And I'm your niece, Katie Albrecht. And we are back. We're back. I know we took a little bit of a break from, from everyone and we, we needed it. I think it was a very good break and we got the rest a little bit. But And, I, and who are you? Oh, I'm Katie. Oh, oh. Nice okay. to meet you. I'm, nice your, to meet you. I'm your niece. Oh, you're my niece? Yeah. Oh, I, I just thought we were everyone else's aunt and niece. Yeah. But you're actually my niece? Yeah. I'm your, I mean, I'm everyone's niece. Oh. But, but I'm also yours. You are? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back to our podcast, No More Secrets. <laughs> yeah. Well, you may notice there's a whole new look to our studio. Oh, I thought something was different. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's probably why I don't recognize you. Because, you, you know, I, see, I don't see the table in front of you. Usually you, you have a table. Yeah. Yeah. It really highlights my best features, you know. <laughs> kind of miss that. <laughs> we just decided that we needed a, a refresh. And so we totally got rid of the tables and all of that. And mm-hmm. I ordered this wonderful half moon thing. And I came up with the, the wall colors. And she did. <laughs> and we had a nice gentleman who's also a listener paint for us. And he did it for free. Although yes, he thank did, you. He did accept a mug. Yeah. And he drank coffee out of it this morning. So, wow, and we're really we got, making a difference to people. We're you know? making a difference, man. <laughs> and I think the pillows are really the highlight here, because I was somewhat disturbed about having tan and gray in the same room. So I went on a mission to find pillows that had tan and gray in the same pillow. Okay. However. Then Katie didn't want all the same pillows, so I had to go on another mission to find this gray one and this gray one behind me. And some circular ones, But too. then Katie wanted some circular ones. It's all about Katie. We got to have, yeah. So I found all about me, obviously. in two different colors. Crazy. Cream and, and gray. And she's like, look how asymmetrical I am. And it's like the same thing, but different colors well, on either oh, side. No, no. Well... Yeah. Yes. But, but, but it, look at how radical gray and t- and cream together. And that one on that side oh has gray with the flowers. Oh, thanks. So it's asymmetrical. But we don't want to <laughs> tilt it to the side, right? Oh, yeah. No, that that was almost a disaster. I set that thing down sideways, people. That's how confused I am. This is how we almost filmed oh today. Oh, my God. How could... How, uh, look how wrong this is. I just... Uh, is, do you guys see that? Crazy. Or what? crazy (laughs) (laughs) i think we should leave it (laughs) i think it would be good for me because i really try to work on this well here's the problem or the solution or something is that i am trying to cut back on my alcohol consumption (laughs) and it really sucks (laughs) and so if i had a half a bottle of wine in me i don't think that would bother me as much it would bother me a little bit but not as much Mm. but now I'm like a freaking. The wine doesn't bitch. make you. It doesn't make you relax more, or no. That's what I mean. If I had a bottle, half a bottle of wine, I'd be more relaxed about that side. Oh, pillow. I see. Got it. Yeah. But, but instead, the, no. I'm all pissed off about the cords being uneven. <laughs> and about, we had, you know, like the longest time setting up today too. Like it, there was a loud like buzzing noise in our, our microphones, and we figured you guys didn't want to hear that too when we played it back. So. So it took a long time. It took like an hour. And we to discovered set this up. it was because so. the cords were askew. Now, if you had somebody OCD setting up the cords, they wouldn't be askew. However, I don't really know what I'm doing with the cords, so that could be a problem. But <laughs> <laughs> you just know that they exist, pretty much. Anyway, I am really trying to cut back a little bit on the, you know, just wanting long to have a been? clear head. Um, a week. <laughs> you know, I'm impressed. I'm not. I didn't stop. I'm just cutting back. Well. But, Obviously. I'm down to one <laughs> bottle. I'm no more than one bottle of wine a day, because I've been. I know, isn't that sad? That's seriously the thing that that's my limit is one bottle a day, and that gives me I mean, a, a clear head. It's only four glasses. Well, especially if you spread it out. Like I don't do it all. Like I start around five, and I'm done by ten. You know. That's but yeah. I used to do one that's and a half to two bottles of wine or champagne a day since grandma got sick for seven Mm -hmm. years solid i mean i've been plowed for seven years but i mean i didn't start (laughs) until two or three in the afternoon that's as long as i've known you too exactly or you know known you (laughs) right know me better but i you know i didn't i wouldn't start till like two or three like when we were writing i'd start at two but most of the time i'd start like four or five but still then the whole morning you're just trying to i'm just never hung over i just was sluggish you know Mm -hmm. there's a difference So I'm enjoying being clear-headed, and the reason I'm doing it is because my man, Terry, is not doing well. 
physically. Um, his heart is really causing him problems, and he, um, he, it's hard balancing this really serious cancer with this really serious heart problem. And so mm -hmm. I just feel like at any moment I may need to like call 911 or go to the hospital or something so like that. So you need to be present. I need to like. be present. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. I really hate it. And it may not last long, so don't quote me on any of this. But hey, but you at least you got a week, you know. I got a weekend and and I'm I'm liking it. Yeah. Nice. Well, and you feel good the next day and The everything? next day I feel good. That's when I feel good. Yeah. The next mm. morning I'm like, ah, you know. <laughs> yeah, bright eyed, bushy tailed kind of but thing. But getting back to our, our room, you may notice there's a sign right between me and Katie, but that's actually going to be And we're sitting on the right sides. Look at that. Oh Have you noticed that? But look at there's wine there. <laughs> I also noticed this detail um, just today, it, but yours has has more drunk than mine. <laughs> Actually, every single one of my clients noticed that. And, and it's they, so accurate because, I mean, I, I'll drink wine sometimes on the podcast, but then I don't, I don't always finish it. No, and everyone's noticed that, that I like how Mary's ahead of you because that's how she always is. I know. She's she really drinking. picked up on it, the artist <laughs> that, that did this. Yeah, you know? she like, did. This is, it's pretty neat. But we have another sign coming that is a big neon pink sign that lights up that says no more secrets and so that's just a fill-in for now but it's on order so we're really doing this thing these are all new mic stands and i got a new computer we have floating shelves for our merch but we're not putting those up until we get the sign up so we know how to space them mm -hmm. yeah this so there'll be more de um, decorations to come and everything but i like where it's at so far it feels very comfortable it feels more conducive we actually um you know, have guests coming on, and it's a lot more relaxed for them, I think, than this a table. This is great, yeah. yeah. I feel like it, we're very comfortable here. I mean, we we can just kind of lounge out a little bit. Like, we've, we've already met, we've had some people, like, come and look at this and stuff, and they're like, wow, this is this is looking really nice. Really cool looking, And yeah. the color of the walls, I gotta say. <laughs> you did a great job. Man, that, it's almost lilac-y, you know? It does, it picks up on, on certain lights like that, yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, but anyway, so I feel pretty refreshed. I mean, for the podcast anyway, I'm not refreshed with my life because I just run from one disaster to another. But I definitely feel but we used to do that, used to have that, and, and also the podcast record. all the time, right? Yeah. So, so it's, it's been nice having a about it, a month off. Yeah. It's been really great. I think we we both were saying that, and we had to clear our head a little bit because while this this podcast is so worthwhile and so we're talking about really interesting stuff, it's also a lot of heavy stuff. A lot of heavy, yeah. And it takes a toll after a while. And so I think we we couldn't be the type to preach about good mental health if n and not take time for our own mental health as well. Exactly, you know? the balance. And then also some time to reflect on where we want it to go. Yeah. You know, so. And how we want to how we want to do it and everything. So, Which, by the way, well, first, do we want to share? I didn't do anything fun on the break. I just ran from disaster to disaster. And I think you did a few fun things. Like yeah, I did a couple went things, to yeah. the Renaissance Fair, right? Yeah, I've never done that. That was kind of oh, cool. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that was the first time I've done it. And I, maybe it's just because I had fresh eyes or maybe it's actually really fun. But it, I had a great time. Okay. Uh, it's like a old-timey um, kind of medieval times um, fair where okay. they have activities. They have shops where you can buy really expensive things. Um, and they have, obviously, old-timey English, English foods kind of. So it was, yeah, it was good. We got to see jousting. Um, Matt, my fiance, threw tomatoes at a guy while the guy made fun of him. Like, and per I mean, that was a part of the that was plan. intentional. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you weren't supposed know. to be offended when you when you do that event and everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was a it was a good time. I I highly enjoyed it. Another thing I did this past couple months is. Uh, I, as you guys probably know, I'm a Wisconsin sports fan, and I got to see the Bucks in the finals, which is cool. That's and win right. the finals. And yeah. you went up there, mm -hmm. and it was a Tuesday night. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> crazy. Pretty brutal. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool to see because it's something I never thought I would see, and I, I don't regret it. And Milwaukee went crazy. Mm -hmm. Even when the Bucks weren't playing in town, they still partied. Mm -hmm. Like good old Wisconsin folk. <laughs> good old Wisconsin folk, yeah, yeah. So it was a good time. I, um, like I said, I, I really enjoyed it. And I I think it had a good mix of getting back out into the world again after, you know, the past year and stuff. And then also just taking time to reflect and everything. So 
And you also good. went downtown last weekend, didn't you? Didn't met some friends down in downtown mm-hmm. um, Chicago, not downtown Libertyville. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> the city. That was okay. a little bit more low key. Oh, um, okay. Where we just got some dinner. And, and then you have a wedding next week, not your wedding. Yeah, you're you're really <laughs> on top of my social calendar because here. Because I got nothing. <laughs> just disasters. <laughs> you're living off vicariously. I live through other yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a uh, it's a lot of stuff. We got um, Grandpa's house on the market, and then a tree fell on it twice. Yeah. <laughs> and now the roof is bad, and the gutter is bad, and the downspout is bad, and the window is broken, and the pillar to the porch is broken, and the porch is pulling away from the house. But other than that, it looks great. <laughs> but other than that, I'm fine. <laughs> it was two days after we put it on the market, and we had storms all week, and it just ruined the whole outside of the house. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, Jesus, you know. Yeah, I can't catch I a break on a thing. Ken. I thought it was Ken for sure. All things bad are usually <laughs> yeah. involving him. Yeah. We did get Steve through open heart surgery and he's got like three more weeks of restrictions and then he's completely healed and he's doing really well. So the next thing for him is a neuro a full neuropsychological evaluation by a psychiatrist and her and her team to see if we can get kind of a pinpoint his his mental deficiencies and strengths and get him some kind of vocation that he can do to make some money or just have something to do Mm -hmm. with his life and we're going to do that and then if we can find a vocation we're going to see if we can get him trained and get him to keep a job if we if we can't do that then we have recent proof to apply for disability and then he's, he's certainly disabled if he can't if he keeps getting let go because of his mental health issues you know Mm -hmm. so um, so that's in, in progress. We've got, I'm working on Grandpa's estate um, for, you know, breaking up all of his assets and trying to get them all legally, you know, separated so I can pass pass them on to the heirs. That would, one of them would be me and one would be you, Katie. I don't know any others. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are their names again? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. But, um, and then, and then Terry's so sick and you know so whatever it just goes on and on but you know I'm grateful as always and I'm happy and I love my business and I love what I do and and I love this podcast so I'm looking forward to the season Mm -hmm. yeah we got a lot of cool things coming up yeah Yeah. it's um one of the fun things I did was go sit on somebody's desk deck once on their hour on their desk that was even more fun yeah (laughs) no i'm fine i'm 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 playing the pity party role here but no i got a lot a lot to live for i'm just really sad about terry yeah i I mean and it's still so fresh after grandpa's death and everything and now it's just another crisis yeah going right into another old frail person Mm -hmm. he's really on you know on the on the brink here but no one terry he'll rally and be around a while so i'm hopeful for that so yeah definitely anyway so gosh um anything else with our room we got new cameras too and new lighting but you probably can't see that but we we really have everything pretty much new yeah except for you and me we're not new I don't think so. Even though I didn't recognize you. Right. Yeah. I mean, I have some false eyelashes on. So <laughs> well, that that's the difference. Sac- yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we can, if you think about it, last season was the first season that we actually did um, video podcasts. Well, that's right. That was a new thing. Which was kind of a cool thing that we, we started. And I'm glad that we did because it's kind of, it's kind of fun, you know, to get it all done up and, and go on camera and stuff. Like, believe it or not, before this happened before we did the video podcast we didn't just sit with like makeup on and <laughs> right and and dress dress packer shirts <laughs> yeah dressy packer shirts and all that stuff yeah no we no, were... were definitely more camera ready than back then yeah but this is so. as good as it gets folks so <laughs> yeah sorry unless we have professional hair and makeup which i'm not interested in no so. no i don't think i would that would take too long you know <laughs> but last season was a really long i think there were like 20 something Episodes. It was, I think it was the first season that we were like, okay, we're just going to go at it, and we're going to keep going, and go, and we kind of pushed ourselves a little bit. And, more a, and then I think had. when we wanted to break, that's when we had a natural break because Grandpa got sick, and then we had his funeral, and then we kind of felt like, well, now we got to make up, you know? Right. Yeah. And so there were a lot of great parts about last season, though. That was the fourth season officially. This is season number five, um, and. Definitely, the guests that we had were so interesting. If you mm-hmm. recall, the peg leg 
cancer survivor, the guy that does everything half-assed, because he literally <laughs> had half his butt taken off along with his leg. And he says, I do everything half-assed now, and that's true. Right. So talk about laughing at, yeah. your, at your trauma. <laughs> and then Dana Rex, right? Dana she Rex great from Belgium. Woman. And we had... Um, Jordan back on again and she's right. going to be a guest upcoming to and, talk more personal and Travis was on too to talk about that's right repeat guests wrongful termination yeah that was a good one as well yeah and I really enjoyed the episode that we did after we got back from grandpa's funeral mm. called we lost a family member and I think it was really nice to process his death yeah. on the air it, you know it really helps it does I mean just like with everything else when when you talk about it out loud and give a voice to it it suddenly isn't as it doesn't affect you as much like it still affects you but it's like it's easier to once it's out and out of your brain kind of thing yeah yeah exactly and and when you don't know really who's listening you know so yeah, we don't know who's listening right now <laughs> I mean hopefully somebody is but <laughs> yeah, maybe a couple people <laughs> here and there <laughs> yeah no it, it was that was a good episode to just talk openly about like how it affected us and <clears throat> how are you doing with all of that I mean he's been gone now for four months um, um four months on monday with he died april 23rd mm -hmm. so august 23rd will be four months yeah it's um yeah that's the time we're recording by the way so we're obviously putting this out afterwards but it's oh. <laughs> <laughs> no i just wasn't trying to confuse the listeners and, and watchers you know because it'll be right after okay right yeah yeah um, no but this isn't live we pre-record oh yeah shoot. secrets are given out <laughs> no more secrets <laughs> <laughs> um you know i'm I was, I feel like I've had some distractions. Like, like I said, I was doing a lot of stuff and everything, but there have been moments where I've felt um, sad about it again. Like I, like it hits you that it's just it's the last grandparent for me, you know. And it's, it was a whole chunk of my life, and it's just it's just going away, you know. And it's it's weird. It is a, it is still hard. And I think with every death. Even though it gets easier, it doesn't really at the same time. Yeah, it gets, I think, somebody said to me once, it doesn't get easier, you just get used to it. Yeah. But it still hurts, you're just used to the hurt. Yeah, you know? and, definitely. Uh, and some, another person said, after grandma died, just wait until you have no parents on the planet, you're really going to feel strange. And I, I have to agree with that. It's mm. weird to be the top, you know. I oh. mean, basically, I'm the matriarch. <laughs> and you're the old? Yeah, you're the old. I mean, besides your mom, but in terms of our blood relation, you know? Yeah. And um, and I'm in charge, kind of. Like, you know, in terms of getting the estate going and in charge of Steve and getting rid of the house. And How did that happen? I know. What the fuck? I mean, you are <laughs> the normal. What were they thinking? You are the normal one. So. I said to the attorney, <laughs> this is funny, I went to the attorney the first time I met him, to the estate attorney. I pulled out my Pellegrino. Boom, we're at this huge conference table. And that's just me and him. You know, it's just like this huge, huge conference table and nothing else in it. Pull out my Pellegrino, my fan. And then I pull out a, nice bag, visual. Of, a bag of pumpkin seeds. So Pellegrino, fan, pumpkin seeds. And I go, go. And he says, <laughs> he says, are you comfortable? <laughs> and so wait, and then put your leg up, and put your leg yeah. up, and just be like, well, not really. And so by the end, I just said, I I know I'm. What did I say? I know I don't really get a lot of this that you're saying, but I'm uh, unfortunately I'm I'm the most successful kid that my parents had. I'm the best you got. <laughs> yeah, big time. So you know you're stuck with this. <laughs> you yeah, laughed. you'd rather have me, believe me. <laughs> Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once you meet the others. And then he did meet Steve because I took Steve down there to get his will started. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. you mentioned this. And Steve says, he, he, you know, we he was asking, do you have kids, Steve? And I don't have biological kids and none of the grandkids do, you know, and none of you guys. And then um, and then most of the niece or uh, cousins don't. And Steve looks right at the attorney and he says, it's in the best interest of everyone else that this family not continue to procreate. <laughs> <laughs> the attorney, he's like, and all of a sudden he, he starts laughing because he's, he's really serious, but Steve really, I think, kind of threw him. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's funny. It is funny. Yeah. 
funny but true <laughs> and uh, true <laughs> i know i know funny but true yeah so yeah um and then yeah i i think he said one more thing to him that was funny i forgot what it was but yeah he didn't and then when he when we left the attorney's office he did that thing where he jumps up and squeals and then walks away like sort of like a weird <laughs> that's my brother <laughs> i know it's it, and the fact that you're able to describe it because i can't put that into words when he does it you know like he i'm just like yeah he's just kind of weird <laughs> i don't know how to describe it but you'll see what i mean but he but he does that he does jump up and kind of <laughs> <laughs> and then like walks away and walks pretends away that this is normal <laughs> but i'm not yeah. there's nothing wrong with me i don't know why people think i'm disabled oh yeah didn't he say that like he he doesn't think that he's actually autistic or something he says he thinks autistic is a jumping a dumping ground for weird fat people that talk to themselves <laughs> <laughs> which is what he is <laughs> right yeah oh gosh but anyway shall we talk about what we're planning for this season we're actually getting organized people this is getting scary eh, somewhat <laughs> i've got like kind of like a table set up well it's only scribbled for now but i'm gonna type it up it's and funny i set up a google calendar but she set up a table so. i did what i took out a piece of paper and a pen and scratched it all together and but i'll said, put it in the google calendar she later needs to put it in because that just understand it. throws me <laughs> i just you know i just like my paper it's but, okay us millennials gotcha <laughs> okay <laughs> what was this thing seal of approval <laughs> i gave it the seal of approval arr, arr, arr. <laughs> yeah I just learned that today. Yeah. Anyway, um, counselor trick. So we're re we're back, uh, pretty pretty involved with uh, youth and family counseling in Libertyville, Illinois. We were spokespeople for them at their gala a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a few of them on. If you guys remember, longtime listeners, Carolyn Parker, and then Jim. I forgot his last name, but. Yeah, Jim um, was on it too. And he, and then we had a couple people lined up after that, and then the pandemic hit, and nobody yeah, wanted just to come didn't in. Work out. So uh, we're back with that idea of getting more regular guests, and I thought that um, it might be fun to, or interesting, to present a personal story on one week, and whatever trauma or whatever mental, you know, kind of. Um, I guess mental problem but also overcoming you know the mental problem um, they present then the following week we would have a therapist on that talks about the clinical side of what's going on with that guest mm -hmm. like she'll have listened to it that week she or he and be like okay now I'm going to talk about the clinical side of PTSD or mm -hmm. um, climate change and the mental effects you know when it comes to the air quality and things like that and and I I don't know it just seemed it seemed like it might be a nice change and so I was able to line up and then Katie agreed because it's her podcast too hi <laughs> I think she forgets sometimes <laughs> I do <laughs> I speak for her it's a true story oh on my podcast <laughs> I did say that just earlier <laughs> yeah my podcast yeah it's fine it's, it's fine I'm fine <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> fine. Wait a minute. Okay, so I want you to know, I went to lunch. We're going to totally digress here, but I went to lunch with a good friend from high school who loves our podcast. Mm, okay. And she says she wants, she thinks that a part of our logo should be me <laughs> with the glass of wine because she loves the way that that happens every episode and then how you picked up on it and then you started like distracting me when I was talking or whatever distracting the listeners when I was talking but now I don't have wine oh yeah but I can still hit this <laughs> oh I'm sure you will as soon as I start to chat a bunch you know true story <laughs> <laughs> but anyway Always. so what we have lined up is, um, uh, in terms of the guests, we have. I'm not going to reveal it all, but I'm going to just give you a few to, to think about. And there is a gentleman that's going to come on and talk about the mental health aspects of climate change because he's a farmer, a local um, farmer. He, he kind of lives off the earth. He doesn't 
he, he farms like local vegetables at the farmer's market and stuff like that. He's not like huge crops and things like that. And he's got a whole flower garden and he raises bees. And so it's pretty cool. And he... I'd love to just talk about bees in general because yeah. I think they're very important to um, the whole world's ecosystem. It, they are. And he and he could talk about that too. And, and he's just... This, he's noticed the soil changing over the years. And then he's witnessing everything that's happening with the wildfires and the floods you know you got Mm -hmm. burning here and flooding here and atmosphere changes and and all of that and not only does he feel that um that he's he's feeling toxic from the air quality but he's also so sad about the state of the world's climate and environment and so there's it's a double whammy of depression that's hit him because he thinks he's also not getting enough fresh air even though he's out on a farm because Mm -hmm. because there's farmers right next to him that are using all kinds of chemicals you know and they're Mm. they're blasting it across and it comes up to you know his property and you know i mean there's so many ways we can go with that too because he I mean, I think he's like a smaller farm, right? Very small. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know. The difference the between small farming and, and it, mass produce farming. Exactly. Because small farming, I don't think, is as harmful to the environment as like a mass production of animals and, and killing of the meat. And, you know, like it's just, right. it's totally different, you know, and it's much, I think it's better to shop or get your food locally where you know it and know like how the cow was raised and all that stuff and that's what he does he lives completely off of what he grows there you know he's got chickens Mm -hmm. he that's really impressive i always respect people that do that and they don't slaughter um animals there but they just eat like eggs and and dairy and stuff like that but they don't have meat they eat mostly vegetables and fruit yeah and all organic and um yeah it sounds like it's going to be a good story i mean so that's coming up pretty soon that, and that'll be soon and then we have also have well you talked to or one of our past um clients or uh, sorry guests reached out you said um yeah um we're still we, we're still talking we haven't figured it out yet but okay. dana has expressed interest to come back on again yeah great so she's the the music professional in belgium right yeah that talked but she talked a personal story last time about um you know being married to a a narcissist narcissist right yeah. so she's experienced narcissistic abuse and everything so that was a good episode i really enjoyed that so yeah and um and then dr jordan wants to come on and talk about a personal matter this time as opposed to the uh, more of a professional in terms of, you know what what stress does to you for for instance but she really would like to share about um a relationship that she got into that was really you know really pretty negative and um and talk about why that happened and the fact that she wants to share is really good you know so we're looking forward to that Mm -hmm. why you know why are we attracted to toxic people that would be what the therapist would talk about you know is that an addiction is that just habit? Is that a self-esteem issue? You know, like that would be the clinical side of it, which would be. I think really it's all. I mean, they'll they'll obviously talk about it, but it's all situational. It could be all of those things that you just said, right? Or it could be just one or something. Like or you could be vulnerable or something, but yeah, exactly. And then, um, I mean, we got. I have several others, but the the one that I think is going to be really neat too is, I would like to have. A clinical view of what happens in your brain chemistry when you are um, presented with a shocking death versus a long slow death and we have a guest that's coming on that's had both you know she's she lost her mom to a long slow death from cancer Mm -hmm. but she also lost her husband with a knock on the door at 11 o'clock at night your your husband's dead he's been in a car accident yeah it's definitely and he processes the, it differently exactly and then and then what that does to you brain wise how does that how do you recover you know I was, i'm sure one isn't better than the other but definitely they're they're different ultimately you you end up without the person so you get to a place hopefully where you can function but yeah i would argue that you would get to grieve it before they die a little bit if you're expecting it and it's dra- dragged out so you have more time to understand it and definitely time to get your affairs in order so yeah that part is good yeah yeah so uh so we welcome that person on on the show uh as well so i again then we would have the clinical side of that you know and the 
and talk about and if for some reason and I told youth and family counseling that if for some reason we can't get it exact to have the clinical side of it on the off week you and I could do some research and present articles like we've done in the past and have more of the clinical side just from our research if we can't get a professional to come on Mm -hmm. right at that time you know maybe there's no one available or it just didn't work out you know yeah for that topic and I just thought it might be a neat way to be like personal professional personal professional like that and so see how it goes and yeah we'll see if we can actually uh stick to it (laughs) stick to it because I feel like we've had plans like this before and but I think it's a great we're idea. We're trying. We're trying. And that the people that I mentioned it to, they think it's really a neat idea. Because then that makes them want to listen to the ne- next episode. Because they want to hear the professional side, the clinical side mm-hmm. of how, and like, what would you suggest for this person, for instance? Or what do you think is going on with this person? Yeah. Kind of thing. And then, oh, and then we have our young cancer survivor. 17 year old she was when she got cancer so oh yeah that's be, coming up too yeah yeah that's going to be probably our first episode right yeah i think so after this one yeah so yeah yeah so oh, yeah, so we got many some cool people things. yeah and so we're, we're looking all very to interesting our, stories yeah and i get a little tired of me because <laughs> all i talk about is tragedy <laughs> you don't get Poor tired me. of you come on <laughs> i mean i'm sure the listeners do right that's the funniest thing you've said all day <laughs> I get tired of talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. But uh, to be fair, I mean, I am really excited. I love interviewing people because I think everyone goes through trauma. And I, I, I know that we say this is like a mental health podcast, but I almost think it's like a, a trauma story podcast. You know what I mean? Like where you, you kind of can relate to other people based on traumas, even if it's not exactly the same. Yeah. And I think it's it's healing for not only the people that are listening, but the people that are telling the story as well. A lot of them are traumas, aren't they? Like major things mm-hmm. that just really But very, floored them. very different types of traumas. Yeah. 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 So it's, I I think that's kind of interesting to be able to connect with people on that because it, I think tr- traumas in general just have been so hidden for so long that even though it's like it, it, there's a big push for mental health these days, and everything it's still relatively new and I think it's great that we're giving people a reason or a way to say it out loud without you know repercussions or anything like that and another thing is I went on um, I went on anti-anxiety meds and antidepressants since grandpa grandpa died um, and I and I'm I've been on antidepressants and different kinds of psychotropic drugs since I was 16. I hadn't needed it for quite some time, but all of a sudden there was something about Grandpa's death, just with the overwhelmingness of it. And is that a word? And then I'm a writer. Sure. <laughs> and then Steve, and then Terry's so sick, and just like all of a sudden I was just having panic attacks. So I got Zoloft for like depression, anxiety. That's kind. Of <laughs> is that over the counter? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kinda, ignoring it. Okay. Is that over the counter? Is kinda, that prescribed? That's prescribed. Okay. So that stays in your system, and that's like every day that I take it. But then the Xanax is for a panic attack, and I mm-hmm. can feel the panic attack coming on when all of a sudden I'm just like everything's out of balance. I've got too much input, and I just need a little bit of something to calm me down other than a bottle of wine. So okay. did you talk to your doctor about this? And then I did. Let's say that you would you would think you needed it, or what, did he recommend it? I she? talked to my therapist about it, and okay. then she recommended she you like a psychiatrist. Said to talk, no, she said just talk to your primary care. Oh, okay. most primary cares are okay with that, especially if you have a history of it. Mm-hmm. So he's just prescribing that for me, and he has no problem with that. And so, so far, I don't need a psychiatrist. So, okay. but it really does help, and I'm happy to say that. And, I, and it's helped in the past, so I had no question that it would help. But I just want people to know that it's totally fine to take medication if you need it. I mean, it's no different than, you know, a diabetic taking insulin or... Or antibiotics or something. Yeah. A virus, yeah. Exactly. So so that's helped, too. Um, you know, so between that and, and cutting a little bit back on the, on the alcohol, I'm not going to quit, okay? Don't ever expect that from this girl, okay? But it's helped me to... Um, clear my head enough to feel like I can deal because the next big thing I think is Terry passing you know I mean death wise I think so I hope nobody else gets run over by a bus you know 
I'll stay away from buses if that makes you feel <laughs> just, better. Just for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I'll <laughs> run the other direction or something if they are driving down the street. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. <laughs> I, don't even know, I don't even know if I see them any buses. Step away honest, from but... the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Step away. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I think you're you're accurate that I mean at least death potential death in the family that would be likely you know but yeah. there's no saying of when that is it, it could, could still be, a be while. years you never right? know if we can keep them on this planet they can come up with other solutions and that's that's my hope you know mm-hmm. it just this week was really hard and he got really scared he went by ambulance to the hospital mm-hmm. and I've never seen him actually afraid of dying like he thought he was dying in that moment mm-hmm. and he told me that the next day I didn't realize it at the time he did say I will see you later and then he said and I mean it I will see you later and then I was like why did he say that yeah and then okay don't let me get going too much on this but I wasn't allowed he thought he was dying from heart failure and I wasn't allowed to be by his side because of the variant I couldn't go in and I needed to have a neg if you do I'm fully vaccinated but they say you still need a negative COVID test. And I said, well, do you have rapid tests available? Well, no. Okay, so am I supposed to bring my own rapid test in an emergency? I should have one in my, oh, I didn't, you know, I should have anticipated that his heart was gonna stop. Mm-hmm, that you'd have to go to the yeah. ER for your family member. And yeah. then I'd have a rapid test with me. And do you even accept a rapid test? Cause they do have those out now, the Abbott Binax it rapid test. It surprises me that an ER doesn't have that when it's such exactly. a prominent, um, Thing in the world exactly right and so then they said um i said well someone call me and let me know how he's doing he went by ambulance he, i mean his defibrillator shocked him at the major level twice and and still his heart rate didn't come down it was it was on the verge of stopping because if you get too high it just shuts off that's what happened when he died for six minutes hmm. and so i said well will someone call me and let me know how he is well we'll have him call you i said he can't call me he you know yeah, he's, he's, he's not coherent he, his heart is you he's know he's the one in the emergency in the emergency room and i just got so upset with that again just like really yeah, no, here we are again you know the fact that you can't go in at all even though you can show your id your vaccination proof vaccination proof i can stay away from people but I can, at the, i'll wear a mask i hate masks i'll wear a mask yeah in an yeah. emergency situation like yeah that. but like to not have tests for it doesn't that seem ER? like the solution to everything to have if you're that gonna if be, you're gonna insist on uh, getting like a, te- a negative test then you should have the test available and right the, there and the rapid test is like 97 percent effective in fact i have now ordered several binex tests there too just in f- case an emergency happens yeah because with terry i want to go in i want to be a spokesperson i want to be his advocate yeah you know? no, that makes sense so um the binex tests are available at walgreens um still two, ridiculous that you have two to for do that 23 dollars um but you can also get tested for COVID for free. So that's where I'm like, why is, is there, why, do why are people making money off this all of a sudden? Yeah, yeah, I know. But I want to be with Terry, so I'll do. I'll play the game. But, okay, yeah. But it makes no, me, I get it. That, that's the only reason. I won't play it otherwise. And now I do go see Grandpa's girlfriend still a couple times a week if I can. Well, they're on lockdown again. And she's like, nobody here has COVID. But they're afraid of the variant. So they're locking them back in their rooms. Mm. And she's like, I'm 95 years old. I want to see my friends. And yeah. we're fully vaccinated, you know. And I just feel, like, so sorry for her, you know. Yeah. You um, go to those kind of places to socialize. Yeah, exactly. So for no she, other reason to, but to socialize and, like, still have a community around you and stuff, you know. Hopefully, like, yeah, exactly. So what's wrong with testing regularly? Like, to me, that's the solution if you're worried. Do the tests not cover the variant? I don't know. I'm so, don't, you know, when I, that's where I need to stop because I'm going to just. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> we can stop there then. But, but I, but yeah. But so. it sucks. But it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> and another thing. No. And no, I, I, I get that. That's. I, I instated a no hard. COVID talk in my classes as of last Tuesday. I said company rules, no politics, no religion, no COVID which actually COVID's part of politics too Isn't so that crazy yeah and I just said we can't do it because people are too passionate about it and people 
tend to, well, they, they get scared and then they disagree and they want you to think the way they do and it's just not worth it and we're trying to be healthy and have mm-hmm. a break from the, the chaos of life. Mm-hmm. So I said no more COVID talk. I was a boss. <laughs> Bam. Iron fist. Otherwise, All right, I'm not doing the right hand motion, but you get it. <laughs> Iron, Iron, Iron fist. fist. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Wasn't that like you talking and I'm trying to, but you weren't saying anything. <laughs> I think I need a glass of I wine. thought you were like pretending to blow bubbles in a pool or something. <laughs> I don't know, man. But uh, anyways. How are we doing on time? I think we could probably wrap it up. But yeah, we're, we're super tired today. Well, you're super tired. Oh. I feel okay. Oh, okay. If I had wine, I'd feel better. Right. Yeah, that's the natural thing. <laughs> I slammed a bottle before I left. <laughs> Obviously. Oh gosh. All, All right. right. So yeah, this will. We air. got a good season coming. I'm. I hope you guys stick around. I guess the, they'll know when it airs because it'll be on. Yeah, you don't have to say that every time. <laughs> but I figured you'd pick up on it eventually, so I just didn't. <laughs> And we need to talk about <laughs> the eye roll. Oh my gosh, the disrespect. No, I'm just kidding. Disrespect. <laughs> the um, you know, with, we got the whole Patreon thing going. We're going to ramp that up again, and we're mm-hmm. going to start an email campaign too. If you want to join our yeah, if you want to join list, our email list, then you can stay up on all things Albrecht authors. Oh man, <laughs> good stuff. Your favorite aunt and niece duo, and I'm the aunt. I know mm-hmm. it's hard to tell. Whoa, that's so crazy because. <laughs> I'm the niece. <laughs> this really works out. And you're everyone's niece. I'm everyone's niece. Does that make me everyone's aunt? Yeah. Okay. Unless you want to be everyone's grandma <laughs> or something. Oh, I don't shit. Know. No. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else? No. Nope. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> okay. With our first for, guest. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening and for uh, viewing our podcast. Bye bye now.